we have to separate our girls and our boys. <laughs> Lucky! He's so upset. <laughs> Murphy's Law though. Nothing breaks in the shop. Billowing smoke. And I'm freaking out of it. Morning guys, it's Friday and today is divorce day. Um, we have to separate our girls and our boys. So that is first thing. What I did find with this breeding group is that uh, they didn't really have a second cycle, which is weird. Usually you get a few stragglers in that day 17 to 21. The rams were worth the use for 21 days total. Today is day 21. And I found it funny that uh, between Chris and I, we haven't seen breeding this week, which is odd. So we either have a really bad scan ahead of us, or they were very busy in the first cycle, which can happen in April. So I guess we'll find out in six weeks. So six weeks from now, I'll have uh, the scanner come in. We will scan, scan the sheep, see who's pregnant. And uh, this is a very small group. So if it's a bad scan, we're in for a pretty small lambing group in September. Go Lucky Go! Lucky! It's like a child. What are you doing? The boys are going to go in there, and the girls are going to go in the center alley, and we'll get it all sorted and situated when we're done here.
from like when I, she was lambing. No, I might have her. Oh, we did we did like one round. I don't know. I'm like, oh yeah. I'm sorry. Okay, I'm sorry. All right, so we will close these guys up for sure. race is on. <laughs> I have had direct orders from Mark to do what I have to do and get back because I am his for the next like seven days probably because of this uh, weather forecast. It looks like Mother Nature has done us a solid and given us a week of potential good weather for field, for field prep and uh, planting. I just took my wool to Blythe like Tuesday, today's Friday, and he emailed me this morning. He's like, do you want to come pick it up? I'm like, yep. And I just remembered I forgot to check. Sweet. Wool and a couch. You want to tell everybody what we're doing? I've talked to you guys about this before. We've got some pretty troublesome field tiles. Uh, in my last video, a lot of you were like, can you expand on this tile situation? So our fields here, where we live, we live on really heavy soil. To get on the land as quick as we can, to make use of very short growing seasons, uh, our ground has to be fit. And to be fit means not wet. <laughs> and uh, in a drought year, it doesn't matter. Most years we're dealing with soils that are too wet. It's trying to drain the surface water. So a lot of our field tiles are old, number one, and number two just with the different crops that we grow now we've got real good roots because we're trying to Im improve our soil. Uh, so we're doing that but in, in doing that the roots um, are finding their way into these tiles, plugging the tiles and just making our fields really wet. 
so kind of undoing everything that the field tiles are supposed to do. We have a row of trees here, a really nice windbreak, and uh, we have a main that's, that is way too close to where these trees were planted. And over the years, probably when they were babies, it was far enough away no one would ever thought that a root would find the way to the main, but they're huge now. And uh, the roots, tree roots have made their way into a main, and a main is where all the laterals, which gets placed along the field, that's where they drain into. We bought a tile plow a few years ago, so we've actually brought it out of the shed yesterday. And we're gonna dig in a new line, a new main. So it's gonna be a frustrating day, probably. This is uh, bringing back memories of my first year vlogging. Uh, that's about the last time we used this thing for any big, big job. And we were actually in this field, but on the other side of it. So what we did here, it's really windy, so it knocked over my camera, but we have a kind of a carrier for the tile that unrolls it. So we unrolled the tile first. So it's, we just laid it where we're kind of, kind of put the, the trench. And then this guy is called the, it's called the Soil Max Gold Digger. Love it, love that name. Mark's got everything through GPS where he wants it to go. Uh, and with that, he calibrated, he calibrated this morning with that trench. And all that means is uh, he has to figure out like topography and depth where everything has to go. So that's all plugged in in the tractor and it will drive, uh, it'll raise and lower this depending on the topography of the land to get to get a good slope so the water doesn't lay and the roots go into the tile because the water's laying in the tile. All right, I'll step on it. I just drop it? Yeah. You don't want Well, we have a bit of a wet hole, which means that tractor pulling that plow so deep in the ground, we're just gonna get that tractor buried. So we brought tractor number two. It's going to be the puller. Just to give you a little idea of how much water we kind of collect in our ground. So yeah, this is just between seeping up and a little bit of rain the other day. Uh, this is what we're dealing with. So we need to get this water. Eventually, we're gonna have laterals come across. So laterals basically are the ones that are draining the field this way. So the field is in half. Uh, this half is draining this way, which is west. We want all these uh, lines here to drain this way into this new trench that we just dug. I think there's six laterals, so six coming off this field and connect it to that main. And then that will hopefully release all the pressure on these uh, tiles in the field and then hopefully dry the rest of the field out. That is the goal. Good sign our grade is right. 
with that flow. Yeah. Well, that uh, did not really, it looked like it was going off without a hitch. Um, we got the tile laid, everything looked really good. We got, I think we are on our fourth, we were on our fourth lateral connection and realized that we put the main in at spots too shallow. So that's all done, GPS, it's all done on the computer. And it was right through a hollow, so Mark, uh, kind of did it based on what the lowest setting would be because then right after a hollow we go through a, uh, a knoll so uh, you, you want to keep things kind of on grade anyway we uh, we were trying to connect these laterals we're like why can't we find we can't find it we can't find it and then finally we found it and it went under the main that we just plowed in so uh, we have to kind of abort this mission which is a shame there is water flowing through it so we are gonna at least get rid of some of this surface water but for now i don't even think we can plant a part of this field and we're gonna bring in the we're gonna bring in the big guns to uh do this properly i think once the corn is off this this fall so i can't even tell you how many days mark has been back here trying to find tile based on really old maps. I think we are going to connect, at least connect the main that, that we did here because it's all opened up still. We'll just clean up all the messes that we made, call it a day for Friday, but oh, it's such a shame. He's so upset. <laughs> Good morning. We're already starting out with a broken fertilizer spreader that was, I don't know, half full. So uh, we've already pre-ordered all our P and K, so phosphorus and potassium for the fields. Uh, that we were going to spread with our spreader here um, but while we wait for parts it needs to get done so we might just call our local elevator and just get them to spread it at least that relieves one of us uh, off this duty and we can continue on uh, getting land ready to start planning hopefully monday we'll get this fixed up for all the other fertilizer duties that we'll still need done this year <laughs> murphy's law though nothing breaks in the shop When the water gets too high, it starts going out goals. Gotcha. Okay, don't worry guys, we're not gonna bore you with just tiling today. We have a couple blowouts in these tiles, and if we drop a tire in there, it's game over. So we are just kind of, uh, we're gonna patch these up. They aren't really used, they're more of like an overflow, uh, but we still have to fix it and we have to fill in the hole so our tires don't go in it. <laughs> this one's been plugged. Hasn't been working. No. I don't know if it's going to be any good. guys I would love to take you along as I pick stones off our freshly 
tiled field last fall. It's agony. I just ate lunch and I may throw up. It's really bumpy and the rocks are really big. So I won't do that to you guys. I'm gonna be nice. thought I'd give you guys a little update on our winter barley field, our uh, field of beer, field of dreams. <laughs> it's growing so, it's grown so much since you guys last saw it a couple weeks ago. Yeah, the rows are filled in. Looking good. Yeah, so if you saw my video a couple weeks ago, uh, this is the collaboration we're doing with River Road Brewery. So we are uh, growing winter barley for them and they're gonna use it in one of their beers and we're gonna do like a collaborative little project if it all works according to our really good ideas last year. <laughs> that was our plan. Yeah, I was just moving a tree for Mark. He doesn't even know I did it. I did it without being asked, so he's gonna be so, so happy. <laughs> so I don't know if you guys can see that, but that's exactly behind my barn, that billowing smoke, and I'm freaking out of it, so I'm just waiting for Jack to call me back to make sure my barn is not on fire. It looks like it's way behind. Well, the good news for us is the smoke is not from our property. It's from a road or two behind us, so hopefully it's not serious. What is this in my field? What is that? Is that a skunk? Turkey. Are you a turkey? Oh, the boys are gonna be mad. They were hunting the other day. Something walking. Is it a skunk? Huh. Oh, that's a turkey. There's a turkey in there. 